usable packs that um, 110% uses, and they last a long time. I mean, I've got some that are seven months old, and I use them. They thaw it on me. I throw them back in the freezer, repack, use them again, and right. buy yeah. ice. But you, you just touched on a quick wow. subject, and I wonder if Simon's done this or Jeannie's done this because Rochelle Fraser, ultra marathon, are doing bad water this weekend. Um, I, I crewed for her at Smith, Smithville a couple of years ago. She did the 50 miler. She came in or she came through her one lap to go, and she goes, Mark, get my bath ready. I'll be back in about four hours. And then she came in and literally went through the finish line, still running, jumped right in the ice bath. And I had it full. I must have put four ice, 20 pound ice bags in there, just filled a little bit, like two inches of water. She jumped right in that thing and sat there for 15 minutes. She goes, this is the best thing you can do. So how do you, how do you, I, I've never done it. I'm afraid to, I'll freeze, but how do you, how do you do that? Well, you just do that. You hold your breath and hop right in. I um, we used, yeah, when I was training with the squad in Australia, every four weeks, because we go on a four-week periodized program. So at the, every fourth Sunday, we'd go to the pool and, and we'd have one of those big cast iron bathtubs on wheels. And everybody for the training program, all 16 minutes, would bring like three or four bags. Right. So we'd just dump the ice in there and you sit in there for one to two minutes. And I would always get in there and I'd sit in there for two minutes. And after the first minute, I'd start moving my legs around. Right. Because the water right around your skin kind of warms up a little bit. So if you move your legs, you get that frozen cold water. And then you go and swim like a 400, just real easy in the pool. So you go from the cold water. And what it does is causes vasoconstriction. So all your blood vessels, ah, okay. they tighten up. So it helps with that venous return, same as compression. And then when you go into hot water or warm water, it causes vasodilation because you're so circulatory system is a one-way pump so all that fresh oxygenated blood goes into the muscles and it's it accelerates your recovery yeah because i've always been told um oh so after you do a real long hard run you know nice warm hot bath no no <laughs> ice and then no. rochelle you get, like yeah. you were saying go back and forth if you've got access to hot right. and cold water right like you're if you're in the winter it's great if you've got a pool you can go from the hot tub into the pool but, right and i mean a lot of like back in the day it's not so much now but sport sports specific training facilities they'll typically have a plunge pool next right, to right. hot tub right and a plunge pool the water is like 55 or it's cold and it's deep so you go in the hot tub and the muscles relax and you go in the plunge pool and it shocks your body it's kind of like getting out of a hot tub and rolling in the snow same thing in san antonio we don't have snow so right it does the same thing now I, it doesn't tickle it can be uncomfortable you go in there yeah she was sitting in like, there and she's like okay mark it's been like 15 minutes she goes put more ice i'm going what she's like yeah just yeah. keep she was keep doing it, especially when she did the 223 solo. She came in and she, she called like 10 minutes out and she goes, I'm 10 minutes away. Get the bath ready. I was like, uh, okay. You know, so she came in, everybody's talking to her. She's just sitting in this big tub. Like, Hey, everybody you know, doing an interview sitting in the tub like, all over for her. And going, That's gotta be freezing and comfortable. Yeah, and you want to get as much of your body underwater as possible. Even if you if you're a runner and just using your legs, well, your circulatory system is your whole body. Oh, yeah. So your the your arms and your chest, I mean, that helps circulate the blood around. It's not just your legs. So it can also cool down your body temperature too. Right, right. Pretty quickly. So, Jeannie, have you ever, have you ever done anything like that? Simon has been every, every, every big race. <laughs> every, I'm pretty every, great. Yeah. yeah, you enjoy it. I, just, I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm the same as you. I'm just nervous about that initial shock. Like, yeah. well, it, is a, it is a shock thing. Do you have the benefit of it? I'm scrolling because yeah. I've got a couple of photos. I'm trying to find them, but um, like the benefit of it afterwards, it, yeah. it increases your recovery time exponentially. So, Mitch, I mean, you've done, you've done everything a physical body could do, bike race, ultras, Ironman, stuff like that. Uh, what do you, where do you see, and, and, and I'm going to go back to this real quick, where do you see how the sport has evolved from your first marathon in 85 hmm. to today? I think that there are so many more people that are getting out and getting involved. I think you see every uh, size and shape mm -hmm. at the race today. When I did um, uh, White Rock my first year, there may have been 1,000 people in it. Today, there are 9,000. Uh, my first wow. Ironman in, at uh, Canada, there were maybe 800 now there are 3,000. You have to register on the day yes. of the race, and it fills up and like closes. literally in five minutes. Yeah, Panama City's that way. Iron Man Panama City, if you're not within the first 10 minutes of it going on, I'm not getting in. Right. Well, so the, the, back, back in the 90s, you could pull up to, they had to Panama City. It was a half, half Iron Man. Yep. You could pull up on race day and register. You register 
after wow. the morning, you can still register for the race and get in. Or today, you, you know, there, there's no way. You well, PBS it. Marathon does that. And I knew it was going to happen. The Shiner, Shiner Half Marathon you guys put on. Incredible event. I had people talking to me at the zoo run last night about it because they're going, yes, yeah, that last year. And they saw Gary Brimmer and I and the folks posting about it going, I got to register. I've got to get in that. And I go, yeah, because it's going to full. It's not a, it's not a, hey, come register that day race. It's capped. Is that right? The Shiner Half? It is. It's capped. Uh, last year we did 1,500. We raised the cap to 2,000. And it won't be bigger. 2,000 will be the limit of right. the race. The reason for that is, is, um, kind of personal reason for me, I don't like doing the, the huge race. I, you know, I, I, the idea of running, running the 5,000 of my best friends. Mm. I, that's not my kind of race. That's why I like trail <laughs> been there, running. So been there, right. done that. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, I'm in a corral. Uh, you start out and you can't move. You, you know, yeah. it comes up any kind of slowdown, backs everything up, and you really can't go and run. Well, mm -hmm. the Shiner run, it's out in the country. It's open roads. You can run your race without stumbling over anybody. But if you took that race to, say, 4,000, that would change. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we want to have it. We, we're going to limit it to 2,000. You know, we had people calling and saying, can we get on a waiting list last year? What we did is we, we opened registration earlier this year. Our current registration right now, um, we're at about um, 990 this morning when I left. Wow. Um, Amazing. 670 of those were for the half, and that mm -hmm. race will be capped at, um, at 1,000. Right. It'll, be a, it'll oh. split between, uh, actually it's 13 and 7, 1,300 for the half and 700 for the, for the, uh, the full. For the, or for the 5K. 5K. Right. Okay. And um, the thing is, it's going to fill up, and then people are going to be doing the same thing. So we're encouraging them mm -hmm. to sign up. Early. This is it, It's a great race. You get a lot of swag. Um, Where's the course? The course is in Shiner. It starts at the brewery. <laughs> it starts at, at the brewery. At the brewery. At the brewery. So there's an ice in there, okay? We have right. such a great time at that race. I mean, Michelle, <laughs> you're my Michelle, not your Michelle. Michelle I mean, did Mitch already hire you for that? I talked about that at Shiner last year. She's like, Oh, because that was so much fun. I go, for you? I said, I had the brewmaster bring him here. Yeah. The brewmaster was like, here, Mark. I was like, really? Uh, You're going to give me another one? Well, this is one we just, we're, we're trying this one. We're trying to get um, Jimmy the brewmaster to run this year. We have a, <laughs> That'd be awesome. one, one of the uh, events that, we're, we, that we did, and we did it last year, and we just didn't advertise it very, very well. And But we're going to push it a little bit more this year, having a, a combat division, right. where if you win a pair of combat boots and you win – um, the 5K or the half, uh, and you run it in, in common boots, and, and boot campaign is our beneficiary. Right. And so if you run in those in, in a pair of their boots, you'll get a Yeti cooler. Oh, nice. wow. Nice. They're awesome. Last year it was a Yeti 65, which right. is, is a huge cooler that uh, they yeah. weighs about 40 pounds empty. And so only out of uh, convenience, we're going to make them a little smaller so you can move them around. Mm -hmm. They're just, yeah. Those were so big. Um, so we expect this year, again, the boot. Boot campaign is our beneficiary there. That's cool. And so they'll be wow. there. They'll bring a bunch of you know boots and stuff out there that people can buy. Yeah, they were they were busy all day yeah. boot campaign last year. I remember that they were busy all day. Nice. And 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 back to the question real quick was you know uh, how has it changed since I mean, like I said I started running in eighty. My first half marathon was Maui uh, half marathon marathon in January of eighty I think it was. But uh, sport has evolved. Like you said, now races everybody comes races. Right. I mean, now they got color runs, they've got mud runs, they've got all these things, but they had, you know, back in the day. But um, how do you, I mean, you're capping Shiner, and there's a, there's a good reason for that. Uh, because of logistical wise, you got to know how many people are going to have t shirt orders, all, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Uh, BCS Marathon does the same thing. He capped it at 1500 for the marathon, and he's got 1200 right now. Mm -hmm. And the marathon is not until December. So he get he, everything's got everybody you need. You got out of your trees, you're like, okay, now we need to settle down and work the logistics. Right. We know what we need to do. And and that's just one of the things that I see. Obviously, rock, we're like, oh, we'll take 35, 40,000 people. And I'm not saying anything bad about rock and roll in the marathon. I'm an announcer for rock and roll, but it's like, when is too much? Too much? I, think that, I think that there is something to be said for that. I think, again, I like smaller races that you can get out and you can run in. Putting together a race and having people come in and do the pre-registration and get it all done makes it a lot easier for the race directors mm -hmm. because I can make it more personal. If I know how many people are coming, I can do better a better job with my giveaways. For instance, if you get your, your, your race bib 
I can say Purnell on yours. You know, I can make yours individual, and I, right. can, I can do a lot more things like that, knowing what's coming. I've got an exact for my shirt order. Um, looking back for shirt orders, looking back when, you, when you're talking about the changes from now and then, everybody wore cotton. You saw a lot more, mm-hmm. we were right. talking about earlier, we are talking about bleeding nipples, and you saw a lot more bloody nipples. Mm. They didn't make nip guards back then. That's one of my favorite subjects, bloody nipples, by the way. <laughs> <Bloody nipples. laughs> And, and Simon's going to want to throw in a hairy yeah. areola. <laughs> this is something to put my no, tongue. Folks, real quick, not, 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 not literally. There. Yeah, real quick, not to, not to cut Mitch off, let's go back to his point, but if you have bloody nipples, go to Iron and get nip guards because they do make them, and we always talk about everybody. We, you, know, you always we, talk about I'm it. I'm telling you, I got a fetish with them or something. I, I'm like, I want to inspect these things. You brought that up. Yeah, yeah, right. But no, go to Iron, get nip guards because uh, men and women have them, but yes. like I said, every major race I've done. They all have nipples. They've yes. all got nipples, I hope, maybe three. Uh, I saw that on the internet once. But uh, anyway, go to, go, go to Iron and get nip guards. So back to your point about how T-shirts have evolved. Well, uh, just, the, just the apparel in general. You know, you mm-hmm. saw a lot more people. You know, you, you, in, in the first marathon that I ran, I saw people running in cutoff shorts. Um, today, yeah. everybody's wearing high-tech fabrics that wick moisture. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're designed to keep you cooler. They're designed to, you know, pull the moisture away from you if it's from your – the shirt, your shorts, your socks are designed to pull the sweat away from your feet, keep you with dry feet, and your shoes are made out of that same type of material where when your socks pull it out, they get the moisture onto your shoe. The shoe is designed to pull the moisture away from your, your sock and keep you with dry feet. Here in San Antonio, it's so humid, it doesn't matter. You're going to have soaking wet shoes. Right. Mark's training. He's running 20 miles a day. He's doing 10 of them, 10 at night. He's got to be going through, you know, all kinds of shoes because they're – they just stay wet. Yeah, you, know, you got to keep them dry and mm-hmm. the patio on the side yeah. to dry. Well, yeah. Stuff with newspaper that'll help. Yeah. they won't it shrink. Out. Talking yeah. about like the evolution of the clothing, I do have to put it out there and say that um, I Run has the absolute coolest, most stylish running and clothes. cutest. That's what I'm saying. Stylish. The fabric. I look at this stuff and I'm thinking. Literally, I bought a shirt there that I promise you I wear out to dinner and to the movies all the time because it's just, it's supposed to be for, for you running, but I just, it's so cute. So well, I was we'll go right run, and Monique sees me and she, she looks for Michelle. That's what we need. She looks at Michelle and she's like, come here. I got some new stuff to show you. And I'm like, stop right now. Do not show Michelle any if cool things. Woman, but Michelle's no. already like, no. done with you, Mark. I'm already over here. If you're a woman, you can't go in there and not. Come out with and that's the problem. It's Let's talk like, about that real quick because when we started, enough. women were wearing guys' clothes right. yeah. because they didn't have women specific. Right, and you, you know, and you see more and more people looking for, um, just as Jeannie said, more fashion. Mm-hmm. You don't have right. to just run in it. You know, a lot of the people are saying, you know what, this is cute. It looks look good cute. and it's got mm-hmm. good colors. It matches my other ensembles, and um, <laughs> we've got a lot of outfits that look good going out for drinks, going Absolutely. to the movie. Going, you know, just just out running running errands, yeah. and so uh, they're 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 cute, they're functional, and stylish. Yeah, very stylish. Now you were not not to to digress, but to to kind of to piggyback on that with the technology of of clothing and accessories. You mentioned uh, the the hydration systems you have. All of that's going to be really important for a race that that you guys are putting up coming up very soon. Too hot to handle. Mm-hmm. Um, to plug that a little bit. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, it sounds like something like you're going to be just baking in the oven. Like, what, what, how long is it? When is it? How can people find out about it? Mm-hmm. The Too Hot to Handle, this is our third year here in San Antonio. It's been going on for about 15 years in Dallas. Um, uh, again, our third year, it's, uh, it's at Bernie City Lake. It's this Sunday. It's uh, July 14th. Um, it's a great race. Again, it's a lot of swag. You get a really nice mm-hmm. um, new uh, Technical hat that's embroidered. You get a New Balance um, singlet. Uh, we've got a real nice, uh, like a lunch bag that, that comes with it. Uh, mm-hmm. The first 400 that register will get will get the cap that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll have great food again. It's in Beauty City Lake. And, and uh, what that's time out. does it that's start? It starts at 7:30. Okay. Um, I recommend you get there. You know, 6:30, 6:45. That way you can get parked, get to the bathroom. Um, look around. We're going to have a whole bunch of sponsors. It's going to be a very festive mm-hmm. event. Um, we've got a lot of food. Um, there'll be uh, we're going uh, there's six different food vendors that'll be there. Um, 
So it, and afterwards, it'll, it'll be a big party. It'll it's a great a party. How, it is. How far it is, is a fantastic it? How far party. is the run? The Three. runs are uh, there's a 15k, and which is 9.3 miles, and a 5k, which is 3.